Hi, I'm Stephen Feuerstein, and I write practically perfect PLSQL. Greetings and welcome to the PL SQL channel, a series of video trainings in the Oracle PLSQL language. My name is Stephen Feuerstein, and I'm a PL SQL developer just like you. This lesson is part of my series on input output IO in Oracle PLSQL, and the focus of this lesson is high level features of the util file package. So, basically, what I've covered previously and what has been available in Oracle for a long time are the basic operations of reading and writing the contents of text files with util file get line, util file put line. Now you can also, now as in Oracle 9.2, you can also copy a file with fcopy, delete a file with fremove, rename and move a file with frename, get the current position in a file with fget pause, and retrieve characteristics of a file with fget attributes. We'll take a look at each one of these. First of all, copying a file. So call the util file fcopy program. Whoops, sorry. Util file fcopy to copy a file, and you can specify the entire file or a range of lines by start and end line numbers. You don't have to open and close the file, so there's no need to call util file fopen or util file fclose. It's all done for you in this single operation. And obviously, if you didn't have util file f copy, you could still copy a file. You could read in all the lines with, with get line. You could put all the lines out to a new file with put line. This is a heck of a lot easier and probably faster because it's almost certainly implemented in C. Let's take a look. So what I'm going to do first is create a file in my temp directory called 100lines.txt. And I'll put 100 lines into my file, line 1, line 2, line 3, line 4, etc., etc. And in each line, I'll generate a GUID, which is a unique identifier, which is a long string. So after I create my file, then I want to copy the file. So first of all, I'm going to copy the contents of this file to another file in the same directory. So 100 lines to 100 lines copy. And then I'll display the contents of that file. If you'd like to have access to this display file utility yourself, just find it in my demo zip display underscore file so basically I use get line to retrieve the file dbms output dot put line to display each line in the file so I make my copy of the entire file and I display it and then let's copy just a part of the file so again 100 lines of text copy to this time 22 lines copy and I'll say let's start at line 22 and go to end line 43 and display that file and when I run this code, I see the following. Let's adjust my appearance a little bit. Okay, so contents 100 lines copy. As you can see, it goes on and on and on and on and on. 100 lines. And then the 22 line copy. 22 through 43. And that's it. So 22 lines. So that, that's it. F copy is quite easy to use. And I'm sure you'll find it handy much easier than reading and writing the entire file manually. Remove a file. So the util file fremove program removes a single file from your drive and you specify the location and you specify the file name and Oracle does the rest of the work for you. This is probably one of the most important enhancements in the Oracle 9.2 release. Sorry about the typo there, that should clearly be a T. Important. Before 9.2, you could only create a file through the file, but you could not remove it. So I can create the file by opening it, writing document text to it, closing the file, but I cannot remove it from within util file. And even worse, if I left PL SQL and tried to remove the file in my operating system, it would also fail to remove because it was created with the privileges of the Oracle process, not my own process. So now I can do the remove. And if Oracle does not raise an error, then you delete then you deleted the file successfully. Let's take a look at fremove. So 
So what I'm going to do is create my own program called fremove. On top of Oracle's fremove, I pass in the name and the directory. I pass in whether or not I want to show the result. So it adds a little bit of tracing for me. And it also adds some error handling. So I call util file fremove, location and file name. If I want to show the result, I'll display that string saying I successfully deleted the file. Now, let's take a look at error management. Basically, there are two errors that might occur. One is util file delete failed. So in this case, Oracle tried to delete the file and was not able to do so generally because, usually because of a privileges kind of issue. Though it doesn't actually tell you the cause of the problem, it just says couldn't delete. Oracle might also raise invalid operation. And that will happen when it tries to find a file that doesn't exist. And then it, then it tells you that was an invalid operation as opposed to fail to delete. So I'm going to compile this program. And then I'll try it out. So first of all, I'm going to create a file called test.txt in my temp directory. And I'm going to write into the file, util file is so much fun that I never want to stop. And I'll display the file just so you can verify the contents. Then I'm going to try to remove the file. We actually don't need this variable, so let's get rid of it. I'm going to remove the file, specifying that I want to display what happens. And then I'm going to try to remove the same file again, and we'll see what happens. I run my code and I get an invalid file operation on line 51. Let's see what happened there. So first of all, it showed me the contents of my file. Util file is so much fun that I never want to stop. It successfully removed the file, so the first fremove worked just fine. The second fremove said unable to find and remove the file. So it trapped the exception, it trapped the exception, displayed the message, and then I asked it to re-raise the exception, so we still saw the invalid operation exception coming out of the program. So fremove will work for you, assuming you have the privileges to remove that file. If it can't find the file, it'll raise the exception. Rename and move a file. So the fRename program allows you to rename an existing file, or it'll allow you to move the file to another directory. So I provide the source, location, and name. I provide the destination, location, and name. And it could be the same destination or a different one. I can say whether or not I want to overwrite the existing file if it's there. And then Oracle does all the rest of the work for me. Let's try it out. So again, I'll create a file in this case called fcopy.txt with my text in it. And then I will copy it to a different name, fcopybackup.txt, and then I will try to copy it to a different directory. In both cases, I'll specify true for overwrite. So if a file exists with the same name, no problem. I'll just get rid of the existing file, create a new one. But then I'll change my overwrite to false and try to move that same file to another file, to another directory with the same name. And let's see what happens then. And first of all, let's also check and make sure that we don't have a file called that. So fcopy backup. So there's no fcopy backup at all. I run my code. And notice, invalid file operation on my last attempt. So in this case, I tried to overwrite. It didn't work. And it tells me you got an invalid file operation. Again, Oracle's error messages are not very specific. It could have told me you tried to overwrite a file that already exists. No, it just tells you invalid file operation. You have to go back to your code and try to figure out what might have actually gone wrong. But now, if I take a look, I should see an fcopy backup file. There it is. So that's the rename program. finding the current position in the file. So util file fget pause, pass it the file handle, and it will tell you where you are in the current file. And it's a relative offset from the beginning of the file in bytes, not from the current line. And it returns zero when you're writing to a file. So this position is only of use when you're reading the contents of a file. Let's try it out. So first of all, I'm going to open my file for write, and I'm going to put a line into the file. 
and then I'm going to ask where am I in this file and you'll see that it's always zero so that doesn't do you any good but I still get the file so then I'm going to read from that same file and then for each one of the for the first 10 lines I'll get that line and I'll ask what's the position on my code and notice for writing position is always zero for reading it tells me how far I am along in my file. And finally, getting the attributes of a file. What if you want to know how big a file is? What is its block size? Does the file exist? So these are all valuable questions and the util file fget attribute procedure will give you the answers to all three of these questions. Unfortunately, I say it gives you answers to all three. What if you want just one? I'll come back to that. Let's take a look. Fget attribute.sql. Fget attribute demo, in fact, is what the name is, of the file is called. So I'm going to declare a variable for each one of the parameters coming back. And I've got a little helper program that displays a Boolean value. So fget attribute, pass in the location of the file, the name of the file, and I get back. Does it exist? what is its length, what is its block size, and I'll display each one of those. So first I'll display does the file exist. It's a boolean, so I've got a special program that converts my boolean to a string. Because unfortunately DBMS output line still doesn't do the trick, at least up through 11.2. Then I'll display the file length and the block size. And then I'll try it for a file that doesn't exist. In fact, it's an invalid file name. And I'll see what my exists length and block size say then run my code and here are the results so for the file that existed it says true yes it does exist its file length is 3404 bytes its block size is 0 I'm not really sure why util file is returning a block size of 0 but that's the value I'm getting if my file doesn't exist it passes back false so it doesn't exist file length is null block size is null now, I had mentioned earlier that I, I think it's kind of unfortunate the way that Oracle did this. To get the length of a file, you have to call this one program that gets you all three pieces of information. Then you have to pull out just the information you want. What they should have done was provide an f-length utility. Get me the length of a file. But even if Oracle doesn't do that itself, you can do it. So here's an example of my own f-length function. Pass in the location and the file name. I declare my record internally that gets all three values, f exists, f-length, block size. I call get attribute for you and I return just that single value. Again, this is what Oracle should do, but they don't do it. So you have to write a lot of extra code, declaring your three variables, calling the program, just extracting the value you want. And what you might want to use instead is my little fget attribute package in which I expose each different attribute as its own function. And I think this is probably more generally useful so you can integrate this into your own environment if you wanted to. But the bottom line is that you finally do have access to this information by calling the fget attribute procedure. Some conclusions. So in some cases the high-level features allow you to get things done that were not possible only with get line and put line. For example, removing a file. Certainly if you wanted to copy a file you could have done that before Oracle added these new high-level features. But we've got new functionality never before available, like removing a file, getting the length of the file, get the block size, get the position in the file. And that's really critical and new uh, functionality in the util file package. So hopefully you'll find that useful to you, as was this lesson. And check out the other lessons on util file and other aspects of I.O. in PL SQL. Happy PL SQL coding! <laughs>